artboards. Sometimes overlooked in Affinity Designer and sometimes not even used at all. So today let's get into them and show you how amazing they can actually be. So currently here I am in a fresh load of Affinity Designer with nothing open at all just yet. So first off, let's open a new document, which if we head over to file, new. Now down here, you've got all your regular width, height, DPI, measurement, however, whatever thing. Now, the important thing here is you've got a tick box that actually says create artboard. So make sure you've got the tick box selected that says create artboard to actually utilize artboards. But there is a way that you can add it after the fact, let's say if you forgot to actually select this. But anyway, we're going to hit create. Now we have ourselves an artboard, which in the layer panel, you can see it's listed as artboard number one, which it always will be. Now artboards, if you think of them as different pages of one document. So in essence, what usually an artboard is used for is to make small adjustments to specific designs instead of making the adjustment and then not having anything to compare to. So if you think of them like different design spaces, but within the same document. Now we have ourselves an artboard right here, but let's say, for example, we didn't select the tick box. So under file and new, let's uncheck create artboard and you'll see the slight difference that the document looks. If we create this now, you can see that the layer panel is empty. You can see it doesn't say artboard one at the top. Now, if we put them side by side, you can see that one of them clearly says artboard at the top. The other one doesn't. And also with artboards, you have more use of outside of the artboard. For example, if we created a circle, we could move this circle and put it outside of our artboard and it would show up and you'd be able to put stuff outside of your artboard kind of if you need to use them later on or if you want to make something and then put it on top of your artboard later on. However, if we create the same circle, however, if we create the same circle on this side where we haven't got an artboard, if we now try to move this outside, it actually disappears. It's, it's there but it's not visible. Having that extra versatility of putting things outside of your design space and being able to use them later on. Because if I click off this, I won't remember it's there. I'll be able to see it in the layer panel and it'll highlight it when I click on the layer, but I have no idea it's there. Whereas on the one that has the artboard, we have the ability to use this and place this kind of wherever we want. You know, we can put this like miles away if we want. Like, I don't know why you do that, but it has that availability. So let's say we're in this situation where we have this, we didn't create our artboard and we wanted one. Very simple. All we do is make sure we are on the document that we want an artboard to be added to. And down the left-hand panel here, we've got the artboard tool. And when you click on this, nothing really happens. But what you can do is just simply hit insert artboard. And now what it does is it adds an artboard around basically where your canvas is. And what you'll be able to see is that just above our little circle has shown itself because now we're able to use the outside of the artboard just as much as the inside of the artboard. Now with this artboard tool, what we can do is we can also hit insert artboard again and it'll add the exact same size artboard again and again and again and again and again and apparently you're meant to be able to use more artboards than you're ever going to need it's apparently they say it's like an unlimited amount of artboard i never got to that stage i've had a lot and over that time it then does start slowing things down because each thing has to get rendered through your graphics card or cpu or whatever so it will slow down processes much much later on but they've actually updated that even better now so that slow down happens at a much higher rate of artboard. Anyway, the more we hit insert artboard, the more we'll get the exact same artboard size. But with the artboard tool, we can actually draw a new canvas. We can make it however big we want it to be, or whatever size we want it to be. And we can actually resize these as well. So say we want to resize number nine over here. So if we select number nine, which we can either do from the layer panel, or we can actually just click the name of each of the artboards. So if you click the name, you'll see that it's selected. Now there's two ways. We can either grab these little blue handles that are on the outside of the artboard by simply clicking and dragging. And the same things applies with objects. If you hold shift, it keeps its aspect ratio. If you hold control, it does it from both sides. So you can keep it centered if you needed to. And you can also in the bottom corner, if you've got your transform window open, you can actually resize and give it a specific dimensions that you want. So let's say we want it to be 1920 by 1080. And then also by clicking the name, we can actually move the artboard around. And let's say we want to pull this one over here and make some changes on something and ignore everything else. We can center it and kind of forget the rest of it exists. So also within this transform section, you've got this little 
link which locks the aspect ratio so say if you've got your aspect ratio right and that's exactly how you want to have it but you want to make the canvas smaller or bigger but you want to keep this ratio if you hit that link you'll see that it's now connected the width to the height. But now if we change one of them, so let's say we want to make this 720 width, it'll keep the aspect ratio and work the height out itself. However, if we had this on link and now type in 720 and now hit enter, you'll see that the width changed, but the height didn't. So instead of having to calculate it yourself, which is what I often do, I just type in 1920 by 1080, hit the link and then think, great, I want it to be 720. Perfect, works out for me. Right aspect ratio, right everything exactly what I want but also down in these transform settings you can actually rotate the artboard as well and you can rotate it around a specific point so it's always for some reason locked to the top left but if we use these nine points here and select the middle you'll see that now it rotates around the middle point rather than something like the outside points like I said a great use for these artboards is for example if we want to create a design of something let's bring back our trusty circle now let's say this was our logo and we want to make a change to this but we also want to keep this to have something to compare to so we can actually click on the name and we'll automatically be in the artboard settings if you hold alt click on the name and drag you'll duplicate the artboard now on our new artboard we'll make the edit that we want to make so let's say we wanted to change the color. We now have a perfect comparison of, okay, which one did we like? Now let's say we thought, oh, hang on, let's go back. This time hold control and click the name. If you hold control, it keeps the guides usable. Whereas if you hold alt, you have free reign to put it wherever you want. So control is often used to keep the alignment right. So, you know, you can keep everything looking nice and tidy. Let's say we wanted to add, let's say a shadow to this. Now we can go back into the different iterations of our logo and decide if we want something designed a specific way or if we like different types, or we could even duplicate that one and change the color of this to that. And just like that, we've got two different logos with two different layer effects straight away and we can compare them by just looking at the screen instead of undoing and changing things and if we want to we can make another change to this one and then another change if we want to so all of these are related to each other so rather than having different documents of different designs which are all related to each other we can keep this all in one place now sometimes when i'm making designs for different people what i'll do is i'll make their first design on an artboard make any changes i want duplicate the artboard duplicate it again until i found the final product now what then i'll do is let's say they want me to make something else instead of opening a new file or a new whole document is I'll open the same document that I was working on. So if I need anything from those old artboards, you can take multiple things that you've changed and then make a separate design. But what's great then is if we head over to the export persona, is now each of these individual artboards we can export separately and we can actually name them different things. So now that these are all named separately and all individual things if i wanted to export all of these at once i would literally just hit export slices at the bottom and it would export every different one as a separate document if i wanted it to be a png or a jpeg or anything else i could make that setting and say i want to export them all or alternatively you can use the tick boxes to export specific ones or instead if you want to export just one of them you can hit this little box thing and you can export just that one so it would be a perfect example of how I personally use artboards and how I believe they can be just really useful. So this is all over on my Twitch page, which is for the panels that I used to have. So I created the first one, made the design how I exactly wanted it looked. So I then duplicated this artboard, changed the center, added the Twitter logo. Now instead of making or recreating the whole thing, all I did was duplicate it again, add the Instagram logo, duplicate it again, add a donations page, duplicate it, and you kind of get the idea. So I just kept duplicating it. And making more and more different panels but like i said now that these are all titled and named correctly always important to label your layers now if i head over to the export persona if i want to export one of these or all of these i could do so and just hit export slices and just like that all of them exported i could upload them as soon as i want instead of clicking on one export and save save it here go to the next one export save blah 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 really powerful really useful saves a lot of time trust me and here's another example for when i was creating the logo i currently have so started with something i thought let me change it slightly duplicated the artboard duplicated it again did some changes thought hmm, got something here and then created upon this one and then thought oh, hang on if i change that to black and white the opposite way how would that look and i thought okay we might have something here then i had a different thought entirely tried a few different things moved them across you can kind of see the process of what i was thinking and then interestingly 
we got to this stage so actually out of all of this i thought you know what these two are probably the best what i want so i took these over here and then started editing these so i added a tilt added those bare claws added more of a tilt changed a few different things changed the colors changed different dials and eventually we got over to what we have right here so yes that's a reasonable amount of artboards but had i had to make each change that i thought i wanted to make on one specific canvas i'd never have anything to compare to if we look now at this final product compared to the very very first thing how would I know this was better than what I ended up with? Or how do I know what I ended up with is better than what I started with? I mean, it definitely is, but this now shows the process. And now I can even go back and think, you know what? I might be able to do something with this one. Let's maybe tweak this one a little bit and let's create another artboard. Let's branch off and maybe make this one, I don't know, pink. But yeah, so that's basically how I use artboards and how I believe they are probably one of the most underutilized, but also one of the best things in affinity designer and they're not that hard to use either so yeah try not to overlook them so that's it that's everything you need to know to make the most out of artboards hope you found it helpful if you have any questions make sure you drop them in the comments below while you're down there make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more videos like this all the social links are in the description and as always i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one